birders, as some of you may know, my name is Valerie and I'm an instructor here at the Bird School Project. Here at Bird School, we've teamed up with some of our friends to help answer some questions you've had throughout the years. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something fun too. Take care. It's the egg. There were animals laying eggs long before there were birds. I think that the egg came first, and here's why I think the egg came first. About 600 million years ago, there were animals laying eggs. We have fossils from that time period of eggs, but this was long before there were any kind of birds. If dinosaurs had eggs, the egg had to come first, and then they evolved into birds, so then the chicken came next. The earliest animal we could call a bird is about 150 million years old. That's a lot younger than a 600 million year old egg. So it was the egg long before there was a chicken. Birds aren't very good conductors of electricity. Power lines are made out of copper strips and they're surrounded by a rubber insulation. They have a physical covering over the wire, like a plastic covering. So when the birds land on it, they're not landing on the metal part. When birds perch on that rubber insulation, the electricity simply doesn't make it through the copper, through the rubber, and into the bird. And as long as they land on a plastic covering and not the metal part, then they'll be okay. Now, if birds were to touch the copper wire directly, that might be a whole different story. Birds do get electrocuted when they land on wires if we don't put, design the wires right. And in some parts of the world, the wires are live electricity and the birds land on them and they die. Birds uh, have feathers because it helps to keep them warm and it helps them to fly. The answer is that birds need feathers to keep them light, to keep them dry, and to keep them warm. They kind of have both. Birds have feathers growing out of their skin, just like we have hair growing out of our skin. They also are waterproof, depending on more or less on the species, but like water birds, um, they have a special oil that they put on their feathers and it keeps the water from going in. Also, birds' feathers are used as insulation against wet conditions as well as cold conditions. But they have follicles, just like we do for growing hair, but instead feathers grow out of them and it covers their body and protects them, keeps them warm, protects them from rain and so on. Um, and feathers are designed so that they, um, when you push down, they're catching air, which helps the bird lift. Birds fly, so if they had heavy skin like that of a cow, from which leather is made, then they really wouldn't be able to fly around. But they have skin underneath, and in fact, um, some of the fanciest cowboy boots you can find are made of ostrich leather. Well, it isn't. Bird poop is brown or green or black or whatever. The white stuff you see is actually not their poop. It's their urine. All the stuff that would normally go into pee, they really, really concentrate so that it's, um, it's only the hard things. Birds need to conserve water in their body, and so their pee becomes highly concentrated to the point where their pee becomes a white paste. And because those hard things, those minerals and salts are white, they're converted to what are called urates, and that's the white stuff in the poo. And if you look closely, not that you really want to, but if you did, if you look closely, you would find some darker material in there, and that's their poop. Of course birds have knees. So, um... You don't usually see them because it's closer up to their body than ours are. They have a femur, like... They have this bone and this bone is just hidden away in their bodies at all time you can't see it and you can see there's the foot on the ground but their ankle is what you normally think of as their backward knee if you go further up the body or further up the leg you can see here's their knee just like our knee like up here is actually where the knee is somewhere up where our like hip joint would be yeah. but it's just a different different setup and they have a kneecap just like we do and uh 
Otherwise, the lower part of the leg is very different. I don't think you have a three-toed foot. They are born with gray feathers, and then uh, over time, their diet actually affects the color that they are. Because of the stuff they eat. So they uh, are eating these little tiny shrimps. They're called shrimps, but they're actually like a little invertebrate called an Artemia shrimp. Contain uh, something called a carotenoid, um, which I just learned that word, so I'm actually not sure if I'm pronouncing it right. These little shrimps, um, they're eating algaes and things, little aquatic plants that, are, that have the red color in them. It's a compound that gives the brine shrimp and blue-green algae uh, a yellow, red, or orange pigment. And then the flamingos are eating so many of these shrimps that, that actually they take on the colors that help them make the color of their, their feathers. The carotenoid is um, broken down in the flamingo's digestive tract, and those molecules are then absorbed. And they... Um, they like to be pink because it makes them attractive to their to their mates, right? So it's it's not only just a, a, by chance; it's also it's also like an adaptation for attracting mates. Whoever is the prettiest and pinkest might get the best mate. There are different types of flamingos throughout the world, and um, there are actually different shades of pink based on where they are, because the pigments in their food is going to be different colors based on where they are in the world. Because birds don't have lips, what they have to do is um, they can't create a suction like that so they have to like lean over and then tip up to let the water go back and so they're like scooping up and then letting the water go down their throats because they can't suck it. Interestingly enough, many seabirds, specifically a group of them known as tube noses, actually drink salt water. And they have special receptors inside their nose which filter out that salt in the soft, runny secretion that comes out of their nose. And they actually get their water from the ocean. Also, hummingbirds are different too in that they do suck it up. And they do that because they have a tongue that, um, you know, it's really long but it also curls in on the edges. And basically it's like having two straws made into one tongue. And so the straws themselves automatically can suck the liquid up. Uh, sometimes it's because they're uh, trying to escape a predator, they're chasing a competitor, they're doing something and they're just, their attention is elsewhere and they don't notice the glass. Birds can't see glass mostly because, um, because it's see-through and... Sadly, when they make the mistake, often it's fatal. They hit the window fast enough that it breaks their neck or causes brain damage or whatever and it kills them. That's why some people put the outlines of birds or even the outlines of um, plants or others, other kinds of shadows on the glass to help them see it. That's why it's important to put up stickers or something in front of your glass so that it lets the birds know, hey, there's something here, even though you can see through it. They are dinosaurs. They're the last surviving dinosaurs. They're the only members of the dinosaur family that made it through the extinction event that happened 65 million years ago. So my understanding of it is that birds actually are evolved directly from dinosaurs. The more that we learn about dinosaurs and the more that we learn about bird evolution, the more similarities that uh, we are finding. Only these small, flying, highly adaptable dinosaurs made it through that event. Therefore, they are very closely related to dinosaurs. But dinosaurs are not birds. Birds are dinosaurs, but birds are, no, dinosaurs are not birds. A lot of these traits are similar to those of extinct dinosaurs and are still in the DNA of modern birds. Of the dinosaur family, 
all of them were wiped out except the flying feathered egg-laying dinosaurs. Now that you heard from us, what did you think? Did you agree or did you disagree? We encourage you to do more research to find evidence to support your point of view. If you have any more questions, we'd love to hear from you. Send us an email, follow us on Instagram, or find us on Twitter. Stay curious and have a wonderful day.